A Musical Life with pianist Hugh Sung. Hello friends, Hugh Sung here. Now in my last episode, I interviewed classical music radio personality, Jill Pasternak. Well, after the interview, Jill suggested that we turn the tables and have her interview me. (laughs) What a stroke of serendipity. I hope you enjoy this bonus episode with Jill sitting in as guest host for the show. This episode of A Musical Life is brought to you by AirTurn, featuring the duo page-turning pedals for tablets and computers. Learn more at amusicallife.com forward slash AirTurn. And stay tuned until the end of the show for a special discount coupon code to save 10% off of the duo. Welcome to A Musical Life. I'm Jill Pasternak, and I'm here with our guest today, Hugh Sung. Welcome, Hugh. <laughs> Thank you, Jill. It's quite a strange thing to have the table turned on your own show. <laughs> yes, for those of you, I didn't tell you that Hugh Sung is the normal producer and creator of the show, but I am a guest and he was letting me play around a little. <laughs> Jill, thank you for hosting the show. <laughs> well, actually, Hugh is essentially a, a pianist. Yes, I am. And you are or were, uh, you attended Curtis, is that right, a graduate? I attended Curtis when I was 13. I was a student initially of Eleanor Sokoloff, and then George Bolette took me on for four years, and then Seymour Lipkin for four years after that. I'm still wooing and awing over that, but uh, just what wonderful, wonderful pianists, all three of them. And very different, too. Eleanor Sokoloff was a master at grounding good foundational technique. George Bolet was a could master. play anything. He could play at anything. at any speed. Exactly. I have never heard such technique. I mean, in but my he life. had such color and such imagination. Oh, but too. such his his technique is was, was formidable. Phenomenal. And formidable is the word. C- Seymour Lipkin had this incredible analytic mind. He could take a piece apart and show you the different structures and demand that you understand the piece on an intellectual analytical level. So I think between those three teachers, I had one, I think some of the best musical training I could have. Well, ever we're kind of going backwards. How old were you when you started playing? I was three when I started playing. My mother got me started <laughs> with some basic piano books. And then she John realized, Thompson? John Thompson, perhaps. Actually, Lila Fletcher. Do you that I don't know. Lila Fletcher books. I, did, I didn't do the John Thompson books. I did the Lila Fletcher books. And then they found a local piano teacher for me. And it was so funny. I thought his name was Mr. Mr. Well, my, my mother said his name and her English pronunciation wasn't very good. So she would say, this is Mr. Raja. Lodge. It was supposed Lodges. to be Lodge. Raja. I thought, it's Mr. Mr. Roger Rogers. from Mr. Roger's Neighborhood. So oh, I, I fell in love with him right away because I thought his name was Mr. Roger <laughs> instead of Lodge. <laughs> Lodge. So you're... you're, uh, you're uh, background is you are where? Where is your family from originally? Well, I was born in Germantown, Philadelphia, but my family's from Korea, South Korea. So I'm Korean by heritage. And ha- when did they come here? They came here in the '60s, uh, about three years before I was born. So in the mid '60s. So they were there. They came here after. After the Korean War, after yes. The Korean you know, War. Yes, you know. And did they come to uh, to Philadelphia directly? Ah, uh, that's uh, yes. I believe they went. They came. To Philadelphia directly. I think my mother might have stopped in LA for an initial short trip, but then eventually ended up coming to Philadelphia directly. She was a nurse, a registered nurse, yes. and then my father came in afterwards, was able to follow along, and he was working in the pharmaceutical company. So, of course, yeah. yes, of course. Well, that's a, a very, very big uh, area. Certainly, Jersey has a tremendous, yeah. uh, 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 you know, many, many great big pharmaceutical companies yeah, sure. are there. So, so you are, um, but but you're basically you grew up here. I, mean, I absolutely. Well, I was born in Germantown. I my hometown was in the main line. I grew up in the main line there, and uh, yeah, I'm now a, a resident of um, one of the northern suburbs of Philadelphia. So, 
Okay, well, I guess I'm not from Philadelphia originally, but I must say it's home to me now, and it's a wonderful <laughs> town. As a matter of fact, I heard not not too long ago on the radio, uh, they were talking to younger people who are developing their careers, don't go to Manhattan, go to Philadelphia. Well, Philadelphia has some wonderful things going for it, especially, I think, in this day and age. We're conveniently located to most of the major you know, musical cultural centers of the East Coast. New and York, the stock Washington. market here is very important. Yes. And the restaurants are wonderful. We're seeing a tremendous restaurant renaissance. Yes, well, I, I think that's that started a few years ago. Yes. So you were, you were uh, actually, you were, you went to public school. And when did you start to play the piano? I was three when I started to play. And, and that was definitely one of the parents, I mean, that wanted you to do that. That it's was your mom. funny. My mom got me started, but my dad was the one who actually pushed me. Really? He, was he musical? He was not. He was not. But it was interesting. Um, he and my mother had heard a sermon at church about King David and mm -hmm. how blessed he was to not only um, be a man after God's own heart, but also to be a gifted musician. And so their desire was initially for me to be trained to be able to perform music at church. That was really their main desire. And then when my dad realized that I had some ability, then he started to pursue other ways for me to get better trained. So how old were you when you started? I was three when I started. <laughs> and what did you do with your, your, your legs hung over and you couldn't touch the pedals? And, I mean, did you play at a certain point? place on the piano I mean or, or and, and as far as the you know the distance of the keys I mean would he, that I mean three is very it, well I remember I still remember the old metal stool that I had under my feet right. for many many years because my feet couldn't reach sure, the pedal so I had to have my feet on a stool sure. but um, did you like what you did no <laughs> well it's, I think it's very very important how did it impact on you your mom and dad wanted you to play the piano, or your mother wanted you to have lessons, but, but it was just to have lessons. It wasn't anything more serious than that. Initially, was it? my mother, now my mother has always just wanted me just to do it for fun. Okay. My father was actually the one that started to push me to try to pursue something more serious. So was he, there a particular reason? Was he talented as a as a musician? He was not a musician. You know, he he had he was working. Um, in one of the pharmaceutical companies. Right. But he loved music. Okay. I think he saw something in my abilities. Who knows? I didn't see it at the time. But he really pushed me pretty hard to try to excel and to practice hard. And oh. We had a lot of crying sessions sure. and yelling sessions. And it was a, it was a painful childhood. I mean, well, I know. think anyone who forces the child to, to practice will get that kind of a reaction, and then you will never forget it in your lifetime. You don't. But, but you're a masochist, I can tell, because <laughs> you continue to become a musician and a very fine one. And I must say to my Thank audience you. here, our audience, that when I, when I heard, well, Hugh called me, and we talked about doing some radio things, and I had heard about him already, so your your name was already out there as being very, very talented. Thank you. And uh, he is, and uh, of course, this is a, another venture for you entirely, isn't this, it? This podcast, yes. This yeah. is, um, it's interesting. I was trying to do some promotion for my online uh, music school. I actually teach piano online. I know that they yes. are doing that. Some of the Philadelphia Orchestra members were mm. doing it if, on... It's actually the same school that those... Yes. You're talking about Jeffrey Kaner, David Bilger, yes, Ricardo yes. Morales. Yes. Mm -hmm. We all teach together at this wonderful website called ArtistWorks. Wonderful. So you go to ArtistWorks.com. And Jeff was actually the one that got me introduced to the whole idea. So I was trying to look for ways to... You know, just get the word out that I was doing this, and I was looking for what we call podcasts. These are, these are internet radio stations. And funny enough, I couldn't find any, I mean, it was, I had a really hard time finding classical music podcast shows. For some reason, it was really difficult to find. So I thought, hmm, if there are not that many out there, why don't I start my own? So this is my newest venture. Yeah, so I decided to try my hand at starting my own show. It's called A Musical Life, and 
taking advantage of the fact that I have some wonderful friends in the classical music field. But I want to emphasize it's not just for classical music. I want to eventually open up the show, very much like you did, Jill, with your wonderful well, crossover. show, Crossover. I, yes, I did, of course, jazz and pop, and music is music. And you are my, uh, you are my hero. You're the, the <laughs> you're the one whose show I want to model my show oh, after. Aren't you so. sweet. Well, <laughs> thank you. I'm very flattered, but. I think that the music is the universal language as well. I absolutely agree, you know? and I don't want to limit it to any one genre. So. No, and and um, there are very few musical shows on the air. Yes, now. And that's why another reason why I think it's important to take the spirit of crossover and see if we can continue it in some fashion. Well, that's wonderful. So. Thank you so much. But I think that's also what's interesting is that when you speak to the musicians, and you find out the motivation and so on and so forth. And with you, um, how do you divide your time? I mean, are you concertizing these days? or It is an interesting mix. So right now I have, of course, I had mentioned the online piano school. I'm teaching currently a little over 200 students all over the world. That is amazing. <laughs> how, but how do you do that? I mean, you... you, you Make contact on the internet, is that right? Well, they come there. They come to this website called artistworks.com, and then they can sign up for a subscription. And once they have their subscription, they, they gain access to my school or any of the other teachers. We have many, many teachers on the, school, on the site right now. So I teach popular piano, which is a lot of fun. And, great. and they have this amazing system called the Video Exchange. What the Video Exchange learning system is, is the students can, first of all, there's a hundreds of videos that I've already pre-created. That's a whole curriculum that they can follow. So they can watch any of those videos in any order and simply learn from those. But if they want some personalized feedback, what they can do is create a video of themselves playing. But excuse me, mm -hmm. how do they know the proper technique? Well, that's where this video exchange learning system can really help. They'll make a video of themselves upload it or post it onto the website, I see the video, and then I create a video that answers their video. And so I can say something like, you know, it sounds great, but you probably need to sit up a little straighter or watch that elbow over there, or your fingers are not quite, you know, in the right place. Let me so help you. So you can't actually start from scratch. They I have to have some basic knowledge. No, actually, with my school, it's kind of unique. I actually encourage people who have never played the piano before to come learn with me. I get them playing right from the get-go, from lesson number one, even if they've never played, they're oh, playing music from the first that's lesson. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I firmly believe one of my passions is actually helping people discover that they can make music when they think they can't. And one of, my, um, one of the things I'm actually known for is teaching people who've never played the piano how to play Claire de Lune by Claude Debussy from scratch. In the original key? In the original key. That's from five beginning flats? To, that's right, five flats. And, you know, it's, there's nothing more rewarding than getting the emails and letters and messages from people. That's a very, people. very difficult piece of music. It is, but I get messages from people all the time thanking me, saying, I never thought I could play this. I've never played the piano before, and now I'm playing Claire de Lune. That is amazing. <laughs> well, you know, I'm going to have to watch your show because I, I can play it on the harp, but... Which, which is kind of cheating because you have pedals. You know, there are a lot of flats in there. <laughs> yes, but, yes, uh, yes. I, 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 that's amazing. Yeah. So my passion is teaching ordinary people who think they have no talent to be able to play the songs that they dream about playing. So, so how do they get in touch with you if they don't have an internet or anything like that? Well, they do need an internet connection to be able to take those lessons online. So that that's one. Now it's online, but it's it's not visual. It's it is visual. It's all videos. Okay. That's what I'm saying. The video exchange learning system I see. is a series of videos that I create, that the students create, and then I can also create these video exchange responses to answer their videos with a video. Now, do they have to have any knowledge of anything? Nope. No knowledge of Do music. they have to know the, num the keys of the piano? Nope. My, my beginning lessons get them from the very, very beginning. We talk about the black keys, the white keys, the finger numbers. This is the musical okay. alphabet. So we walk them completely through. But then the other key thing is one of my teaching philosophies is that I believe people work best when they have motivation. 
So in other words, rather than simply starting out with esoteric exercises, I start out with songs that they want to play. So for example, if somebody really wants to play Claire de Lune, and they've never played. They the should have before. their head examined. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe some some people might think that, but it's believe one me, of the most yeah. exquisite pieces of it music. Is. And of course, it's orchestrated, and also there's for piano, and then there are transcriptions. But it is a very, very beautiful but difficult piece. See, I believe that anything can be broken down. Well, of to course. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of kidding, you know. In a yeah. way, I'm kidding, but it is definitely an advanced piece of music for piano. Which makes it so much more rewarding when I have these absolute beginners who have never played. In fact, I, I, I have there's one of the students, I think she is in her 60s. She's never played the piano before. She saw some of my videos, signed up for my school, and within one year, oh. she was playing Claire de Lune from memory from beginning. To end. Did, but now, did she know what she was doing? No. She had never had piano lessons before. But I mean, when she wound up playing it, did she know what she was doing? Yes, she did. She's playing the whole piece. It's so beautiful. And it's, you know, it changes somebody's life. Oh, my life. goodness. It, it changes somebody's life when they realize that music can be more than just something you hear, but well, it's something that incredible. you make yourself. Now, if I, if I didn't know anything about mm -hmm. music and I wanted to play the play, what would I do? I would call you or go to the web. You would go to the website. You would go to artistworks.com forward slash Hugh, H-U-G-H, hyphen, sung, S-U-N-G. Or you can go to my own personal website at Hugh Sung, H-U-G-H, S-U-N-G, dot com. And there's a link to my piano school on my website. Okay. Placing your fingers on the keys. Mm -hmm. You don't have anybody to adjust your hand. See, the interesting thing, though, is they can, people can learn at their own pace. They can simply watch the videos and teach themselves. If they need some help from me personally, they, make, they can get their smartphone, iPad, or, a web, or a computer, make a movie of themselves playing, and then whatever it is they're working on or having trouble with, then they'll put that video on the website. We call it uploading the video sure. to the website. I'll see that in my list of video requests, or video exchange submissions, we say. And then I will create a custom video for that student. And then I create a video exchange response answering that video. Mm -hmm. So they'll see their video, and then they'll also see my yeah, video yeah, paired awesome. with theirs. And then I give them all the advice they need. Say, watch your hand over here. Change the finger over here. I can even show them the, the, the sheet music. I can circle little notes and right, say, right. watch out, you want to change this fingering here or there, okay. you maybe miss this note there. So, and I have in my home studio a few camera angles as well, so I can show them the side, I can show them from above so they can see my hands and the keys. 
and I can switch back and forth between these various camera angles to give them probably a much more immersive lesson on video than I could. Now, how many person. lessons do you, uh, do you advise, for instance... Uh, well, one lesson a week probably is, would be okay. These days I'm so busy, I generally get to my video exchange responses um, once a week. But, I, you know, the students can post as many videos as they want. So some of the students will post two, three, four videos at a time. Hmm. So they can work on as much as they want. And I'll try to answer them as, uh, but generally I'll, I'll batch them all up and answer them once a week. Are you the only person doing this kind of thing? No, no. We have several members of, as you mentioned, the Philadelphia Orchestra. That we're I had heard teaching. about something yes, and I yeah. was curious. Yeah, the, the members of the Philadelphia Orchestra were the ones that are doing the same thing on this same website with, as with well. With probably strings and brass, I guess. Right, or trumpet and clarinet. Mm -hmm. um, the violinist is actually a, gra a Curtis graduate who is the associate principal uh, associate concert master of the LA Philharmonic, Nathan Cole. Oh well. my! So that uh, yeah, but they have they have a. I teach popular piano. They actually have a classical piano teacher, and they also just added in a, a jazz piano teacher too. So there's a lot of variety. Oh, I think it's yeah. fascinating. Yeah, really neat. And are you having good success? I mean, how how are the people learning? You know, you measure for me as a teacher. You measure your success in the progress of your students, and I have to say, it's been a thrill seeing people who have never played before make beautiful music, make beautiful progress. And because of the format of the way this video exchange learning system works, people can't help but learn. And they all make progress, no matter their ability level. It's really amazing. I, I just think it's fantastic. It's just wonderful. You have to put a harp in there. <laughs> uh, no, I, I think that's really amazing. And of course, people love to play the piano, I yes, think. And they yes. don't really have to get to the... the uh, the um, the serious state of you know I mean you you can the piano is something you can play and enjoy and you don't have to be a virtuoso. I absolutely agree. The piano is probably the easiest instrument yeah. to well, get started. Well, in a sense, in a sense, in that sense, and uh, I, and I I mean I I think that it's it's a boon to people that love music and perhaps have never able to afford it or exactly or now in terms of the piano you have to have a keyboard at some point right some sort of a keyboard it doesn't have to I mean I I encourage people to get what they can afford and, and do you advise them where to go for that I mean where do you just get a keyboard? you really get you can get a keyboard in any music shop any music store but there aren't there different sizes there are different sizes I generally recommend if they can afford it to try to get an 88 key keyboard yeah. but some students have only a, one of the 66 keys and I you know I'm very flexible I, I try to really meet the students where they are and work with what they have and I and so many times these students, they, they've starting with an inexpensive instrument, but then as they fall in love with the, playing the piano and also realize what they need to do musically, they start to realize, I need to upgrade. I need to get a better instrument. Well, what is the, do you have any time, if you're saying, somebody says, Mr. Sung, I want to learn how to play the piano. Will I, will I be able to play the piano in a month? Will I be able to play the piano? I mean, not just fiddle around, but to play the piano in a year. Can you advise me? The first point, the first question, the most important question is, what song do you want to play? And so that answer will really depend on that. Now, know. do you get people who want popular music, or do you get people that you want classical music? I get people who want all sorts of music. Some people want to play classical. Many people want to play pop. Some people want to play a few jazz arrangements. I, I've even had some very unusual requests. Some of the students have asked me about a song that no sheet music exists for, and so I'll listen to the song, and I'll make a special arrangement of that song, because I can transcribe music Show also. off. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually, know, it's probably got perfect pitch, yeah. too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I'll transcribe arrangements specifically for Very my nice. students to help them, because, I, again, as I said, the, the biggest progress comes from people who play what they love to play, no matter how difficult now, it is. Now, again, the, uh, the one of the important questions is what cost or something like this. Well, it's prohibitively expensive. I mean, you know, pianists like me. <laughs> <laughs> about a dollar and a half an hour. <laughs> Believe it or not, you know, the lessons, if, when you get the yearly plan, it is less than a dollar a day. Less than a dollar a day for unlimited access. It's an amazing and exciting thing. Yeah, I just can Now, are you? Can you have like a lesson a week and pay? How do you have to pay for this? You, again, there is either a one month or a three month or a one year 
subscription that you pay for. So you can either pay a month at a time, three months at a time, or a year at a time. Now, what are you talking about in roughly in terms of how much? About a, about a dollar a day. A dollar a day. So that's, you know, at the cheapest rate, which would be the, the year subscription, is under a dollar a day. So it would be under... I can't remember exactly. The other, $250. Uh, well, $270-something, something, something for, like for that. For a year. For a year. That's very A cheap. year of unlimited access. It is, it's incredibly affordable. That is, you know, really. I think it's like $35 for one month, I, I think, and like $90 for three months. So again, it averages about about a dollar a day. It's really wonderful. My goodness. It's fabulous. <laughs> How many students would you say you have have accumulated over the years. Well, how long have you been doing this? Well, this is actually the, the, the close of my very first year with Artist Works. We're just finishing our first year with Artist Works. And um, through that school, I've, I've worked with, I, I now have a current roster of a little over 200 students at this oh, point. Oh, that's wonderful. Are um, they from all over the world? They're from all over the world. I've, I have students in Japan, China, Canada, Australia, Germany. Have you ever asked them why they want to play the piano? Have Have you ever gotten into that? They level? They all come in with various reasons. They actually will come on video and will talk to me and explain what they're doing. Some people, you know, share their stories of you know having always dreamed of playing and and, and wanting to ever since they were a child. Other people maybe have been musicians and they want to get back or play another instrument and just want to learn some fundamentals. So, 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 so how reasons. would I contact you now? I just heard you on the air. Yes, and I am fascinated. I want to. Definitely make a connection. What do I do? You need to go to either my own website or you go to the Artist Works website. So the website is artistworks.com forward slash Hugh, H U G H hyphen Sung, S U N G. Okay. Or you can go to my personal website at hughsung.com and you'll see the link to the piano school that'll take you right to the Artist Works school there. I just think this is fantastic, and I wish you the best of luck. I, I, I just can't imagine how exciting <laughs> that must be for the person on the other end to have something that they thought they could never achieve. And that's really what it's all about, making dreams come true. Oh, it's very exciting. <laughs> and so you, you, what would you say, again, you, you don't have to have anything, nope. no background, just no the background. desire and the will. Exactly. Yeah. And um, how long is the lesson? Approximately an hour, is it? No, it's interesting because uh, the students post whenever they want. We don't schedule anything. So the, that's what's so brilliant. So somebody in China can post their video middle of the night, first sure, thing in the morning. because of the time. Yeah. Because I don't, but I don't, they don't have to wait for my schedule. They post whenever they want. I then also, whenever my schedule is free, I watch and respond whenever I want. And so the, the, my responses will vary according to what the student needs. Let's say a student plays a piece and they play it perfectly. I might give them a two or three minute video response saying, well, that sounds great. I want you to move on to the next piece. Another student may play something and then I may give them a 10, 15 minute you know, response, very detailed saying, this is great, but these are the things you need to work on. So I, I jump right to the solutions for each student in whatever length video response I give. So. so then do you have any kind of a final, like a little concert or something that they would give? Or, or say for a piece of music. Gen say, yeah. say something like Clair de Lune, which is a very difficult piece yes, yes. for the piano because there are so many accidentals. But... Um, uh, I'm saying that as a harpist, by the way, because yes. all I do is set my pedals and all those <laughs> flats are going, you know, up and down and so on and so forth. <laughs> However, um, so that's a difficult piece of music. Yes, yes. Because of the key signature, I think. That is. But again, I have a unique way of teaching that breaks that down. And Do I, they have I, to know any music at no, all? No, no. And so that's what, what I try to do. I try to get people's hands on the piano. We start with them very basic. Just put your hands here, put your hands there. Oh, by the way, this is a flat. That is a oh, natural. Okay. okay, and then as they move along, oh, by the way, this is a key signature. That'll save us some time. So you're actually starting with putting their hands yes. on the keyboard. Yes, and then as they're making the sounds, little by little, I introduce the concepts of, oh, this is a quarter note. This is a time signature. This is, these are staff, and we look at each element as they progress. As they arrive. Rather right. than requiring them to know a whole body of knowledge right. first before right. even putting their hands on the piano. Right. That's, that's 
very exciting. Thank you. It's wonderful, and it's it's so forward looking, and it's really <laughs> unique. And I'm sure that you're having a lot of success. With it's it. wonderful. I I love my students, and it's uh, if you I can ever play duets with them. Um, not yet. It might be an interesting thing to try in the future. I'll have to look into that. That's a great idea. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. You can even play, what is it? Chopsticks. There you go. <laughs> Which is lots of fun. It is. <laughs> well, that, you should do that's, that. That's a very good idea. Yeah. I think I'll, maybe I'll, I'll make a video. Or you can assign, Yeah. you know. Uh, sure, sure, sure. A, I, uh, I think that's a great idea. Uh, you know, I can piano I'll, one and then piano exactly. two. Exactly, and I'll I'll play one of the other parts, yeah. and then they can record themselves playing with and my. And very video. exciting. You could play the melody, and they play yeah. the harmony, or vice versa. We should get you on the school. My well, goodness. Well, I would love. I, I I I can play the piano, <laughs> and I have. Well, we'll try hard. Next. So, but this is thrilling. I I think it's thrilling, and I'm saying that. Through the eyes of someone who, I, I mean, I play the piano, I'm a musician and so on. Um, the thrill of making music yes. yourself yes. on an instrument is so, you cannot even describe the, not only the sense of achievement, but the utter joy. And you have a result right away. Yes, yes, absolutely. I mean, again, this is... Why? Do you do you ask them to practice for any length of time anywhere? I don't. The interesting thing is when you love what you're doing, you put in whatever yeah. work is required, and that's the beautiful thing. I don't. It's I never have to force my students to practice. They approach what they, I give them clear things that they need to work on, and but we do it in a spirit of a lot of fun. But then again, you are you doing much with technique? It depends on the students. Some, I've had several, and I don't have technical exercises in the core curriculum, but then I've had students that say, I want to strengthen my fingers. I want to learn scales. I want, and so that I'll create custom I lessons think. to walk them through more fundamental technical So essentially, things. what are you doing? You're just making sounds first or playing melodies? You're playing, we're playing music right from the beginning. Two hands. And, and but they're not, re are they reading the music? Yes, yes they are. So you have to teach them how to read them. We do that as they go, lesson by lesson, yep. <laughs> Every good boy deserves fun. Right? Well, I actually changed that to, ew, great big dog fur for the uh, G clef and then a fall down ball game oh. for my F clef. <laughs> oh, I know. They can't fall down better than I <laughs> believe me. Oh, my. It's wonderful. I Thank you, just Jeff. can't tell you how exciting it is. And you're bringing joy, such joy. There's, that's really the dream, the hope to spread music education around yeah. the world. Now, again, how long is the lesson? There are no preset times. People can post as many videos as they want. So generally what they'll do is they'll play one song per video. I see. And the videos are generally not that long. They're so the, the, there's a repetition in there. As long as you have the video, you can keep looking at it again and again. Absolutely. And again. Yeah, that doesn't go away. It doesn't go away. Right. Exactly. So you have that right there it's, all, I mean, could, for three right, months? Right, right. And the other students can watch that video too and learn together. They can watch each other's videos so on the same So you can piece. have a class way, kind exactly. of, kind of. Exactly. It's, not, it's exactly Brilliant. that. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. So they're doing that with strings, and I think that's really... They're that's, doing that with all genres. They have rock I, guitar. I, I really say this, and it's, it's not fair, but I think all of the instruments are difficult. But the piano makes sense for someone who is not that dedicated in terms of the seriousness of the, 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 le the what am I going to say, the seriousness of playing the piano sure. beyond just playing the piano. I, I agree. Mean, you I know agree. what I mean? Sure. It's, it's very, very, it's laid out for you. You know, there's nothing obscure about it. Right. You don't have to measure a string length or right. something like right. that right. and so on. So it's it's um, it's note for note. Yes, mm -hmm. it's really one of the easiest instruments. I mean, one of the easiest melodic instruments to get well, started. It's, with. Yeah, you can you can make it sound like something. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and what would you say your level of expertise, not yours, but the <laughs> level of expertise, is where the student has to then begin to seriously think of transferring to some kind of another uh, way of learning it. 
Well, like see, that's, a, that's the beautiful thing. I mean, I've got students who range from folks who have never played the piano before. To, well, I had a student who posted yesterday. He uh, is playing the third movement of Beethoven's Pathetic Sonata. Nothing, nothing too you easy know? about that one. Well, but you know, the, the nice thing is that there is no limit to what the students can play or learn because will, I can do all those things. Will you them. ever see them in person? Ever do you ever have a chance? I, be, I believe it or not, I, I had one student who flew all the way from England to take a private lesson with me in person. Oh my goodness! Yeah, <laughs> had a lovely time working together, and now she's taking lessons with me through the online school. It's a lot more convenient than flying back and forth across the pond. I was going to cheaper too. <laughs> but I do have another student uh, who works with me in person. But she does it together. She also has a subscription to the school, to the online school. And the nice thing is that through the online school, we work on her scales and exercises. And in person, we work on her pieces. So she gets a double scales. dose of me every week. Flats, sharps. <laughs> well, it's fascinating. And we'll, we'll certainly hope to speak to you about more. And maybe will you have a, a recital for your students? Well, generally what happens is when, I, when the student plays a piece to what I what we both think is to a level of completion, I'll encourage them to post that video onto their own page within the school. And then I can select that and use that as the featured video. So generally once a week, I'll so switch up. it's a concert. Up. It's a recital. It's kind of like a mini recital. I mean, people can post as many videos as they want on their own pages, but I will hand select something that I think is really special on the home page so that everybody can watch that. I would so. imagine that this is one of the most thrilling experiences for anyone who who has never been able to take lessons. Absolutely. I, I can't even begin to explain what you feel when you achieve. This is not easy. No, no. I mean, There's nothing about this that's easy. Well, we do make it easy. <laughs> well, what I mean is essentially the whole process is not easy. I mean, you're also developing technique. Is that another thing? How does that work, for instance? I mean, you're not with the you're not sitting next to your student, but do you ever correct the position or perhaps the wrist? Or the All the time. The I think one of the, the one of the misnomers is the thought that the teacher has to physically be in the same room with the teacher. There are advanced. I mean, with video technology, video exchange technology, Believable. just the, the the very fact that I'm watching a video means I can pause, I can rewind, I can watch the same section over a limitless number of times. Yes. It's as if I have a thousand eyes. Well, you can. Yeah. This is really amazing. I mean, it's just changing the entire uh, world of, of access to studying, you know, maybe on some level, this doesn't have to be for a professional sure. career, but certainly the joy of playing. Now, do you teach like we call it popular music, but I mean, you know, is there that anymore? Because years ago, you used to have terrific you know, pop tunes and so on you can play on the That's piano. really That really composes, prizes most of my curriculum. I'm, I'm teaching things like um, Memory from the Broadway musical okay, Cats. Yeah. I'm teaching Somewhere Out Are there. they your arrangements? Or? I, I, they, they're all my own custom arrangements. Yeah. Um, the Entertainers, sure. they're one of the themes from Charlie okay, Brown, so, okay, <laughs> Vince Guaraldi. Great, you know. great, great. So great. yeah, a lot, of, and a lot of fun, popular tunes. I even have an arrangement of the Moonlight Sonata, but simplified. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I think Beethoven would appreciate that. Well, that is one of the yeah. most difficult pieces to play on the piano. One of the most, George Bullet. Oh, yes, yes. Probably yes. one of the most exquisite performances mm -hmm. of very the Moonlight Sonata yeah. that I have ever heard, and I still remember it. Oh, I miss George. He, he was, was a magnificent teacher, magnificent pianist. What a pianist. Yeah, yeah. It's, he, he certainly informed my sense of piano color. Oh, he, his, his, yes, his touch. Yes, his incredible touch. He, he would, it's so funny that most of the lessons would be me playing, attempting to play something, and he just kind of looked at me with a cigarette in his mouth and stand up, lumber over me, and said, just move over. <laughs> and then he'd sit down and play it for me. Really? And I'd be standing there with my jaw and dropping. where was this? This was at Curtis when I was studying with him, you know, so and he just played me and just kind of look at me. and. Well, you and had I, the best. I, I, I mean, I look being on the radio and playing every conceivable pianist that's, that's recorded, I still say Bolette was, the, was one of the greatest artists. I, I In retrospect. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Probably one of the greatest uh, pianists of, of all. Can of you imagine? What, I mean, what a thrill it was every week to get to hear him you, play for me. But oh, I my mean, goodness. To, to, yeah. But his, his interpretation, oh. the, the subtlety. The, yes. 
I, I discovered him on the, you know, on the radio. Yes. And I must say, I never, I, I just, I marveled each time. But he also had an interesting sense of freedom, interpretive freedom, and uh, how should we say, he would cheat an awful lot. Yeah. In other words, you'd see a run and you yeah, play okay. it the way it's printed. And he'd say, well, I do it that way. Here, here's a cheat over here. Move your hand over that way. I, my eyes would go open. I, I'd be asking, Mr. Blood, are you allowed to do that? As long as it sounds good. <laughs> so he had yeah. all these nifty little tricks and oh. things up his sleeve to make the most difficult passages actually And work. you hear it. You hear yeah. it, the Chopin. The yes, Chopin. Oh, yes, yes. He was incredible. You were a very lucky guy. I yes, I, I I'm was very blessed to have had some yeah, incredible I, I mean, instruction as and an artist. I, I really just became aware. Well, I knew of him as an artist, but really became aware of him just playing his things. On sure, the air, you know, sure. And, so on, and and realizing the beauty and the, the subtlety. Yeah. The subtlety. Yes. Yeah. 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 Really, I, mean, I had, didn't realize that he had taught at Curtis. Yeah. Since I'm not a Curtis person. Well, he was. He he taught. Well, I was with him for four years. And then he left because his career has started to take off again. And when he left, I got transferred over to Seymour Lipkin. And so Not finished different. off my last four, yeah, finished off my last four years of career. But Curtis different, I think yeah. different. Very different. Seymour Lipkin was very analytical. Mm -hmm. uh, one day he asked me, Can you, why don't you analyze this concerto? I had no idea what he meant. And I came back with some gobbledygook. He looked at me and said, how is it you don't know how to analyze a piece of music he went straight to the administration and demanded that they create uh, a form and analysis class because of me. <laughs> so well, you left your mark. Well, he, he, and he really forced me to understand the structure of music, which I never really comprehended until working with him. So I really owe him uh, the gift of an analytical mind to break a piece apart and really understand how a piece of music works. So. Oh, yeah. Well, so, some are easier than others because depending upon when they were written, you know, yes. more exposed. Yes, yes, yes. You yeah. know what I mean? Sure, yeah. sure. But really just, oh, it's very thrilling to speak with you and, and you're very, very talented and I'm excited about your, your uh, bevy of students, you know. <laughs> so uh, what can we look forward to? coming up anything or, or more of the same well interestingly well of course we have this show which you are guest hosting on oh, Jill thank yes. you so much for guest Pleasure. hosting on the show um, I do have a tour of, of, of Asia I'll be going to Korea Japan and China with a wonderful flutist her name is Jasmine Choi so she and I will be touring in the fall and looking forward to that She's, she and I have actually recorded several albums together what, com um, what composers We've, we've um, we haven't decided the repertoire for the tour yet, but we well, our last album was a really fun one. We uh, performed Claude Bowling's um, oh, suite, suite and his yeah. first suite for flute and piano, his, yeah, his jazz fun. suite. Yeah, that was jazz great. Suite, yeah. um, in, in a couple of months, I'll be giving a lecture for music entrepreneurs at Anderson University. Now, what is an entrepreneur India? for in music? <laughs> Somebody that's trying to make a living, I guess. Well, music, uh, specifically how to think of your music as a business and what kind of businesses you can get into as a musician or even acquiring better business acumen for marketing, promoting yourself, yeah. and just thinking about making a living. Very, very important. I agree with you because you have your students or people that are just entering the business, and the business is, is awful. And the business is very difficult, too. It is challenging, but you mm -hmm. know, it, thanks to so many advances in the Internet, specifically with social media, things mm -hmm. like Facebook, it's easier than ever to market and get your message out there. The key thing, I think, that... I, I love to talk about is the story of my work with a company called Airturn, which I co-founded. And Airturn was a company where we developed um, page-turning pedals oh my, for wonderful. reading music on tablets and computers. So I, I don't know if you know, I have my iPad in front of you, in front of me right now. And on my iPad here, I have six thousand pieces of sheet music. My entire music library, as a collaborative pianist, is on this one-pound device. Goodness. And so I and co-founded a company that made pedals to turn pages hands-free. So I could read the music, play the piano, and then use my left foot to turn pages <laughs> while I read the music. If you ever played the harp on an outside wedding. 
You'll appreciate the need for an the iPad. The blend. With... <laughs> yeah, I don't have that problem. No, no clothespins <laughs> no anymore. Close pins, oh, no clothespins. No, it's goodness. all on my iPad. It's oh, really that's so, well. There's so, so much to. There's so much to talk to you about that we're going to have to have another edition I of think this so. show. Well, we're going to or have to. Several. Yeah. <laughs> well, really? Jill, Jill, thank you so much for uh, <laughs> turning the microphones on me. <laughs> well, I, 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 there's so much to talk about. Well, we're going to have to have you back as a guest host because I would, I would love that. Oh, I'd love to have you back on this show. But because we are getting insights that yes. are so unique and precious and special. Yes. Yes. You have no other option. There's nowhere else to hear about this. Exactly. And, and people who are knowledgeable like yourself about music to get the and inside story. And even if you don't know anything, and if you do know something, you're learning something. Yes. You know. Yes. So it's, a, it's been a joy. I can't tell you how much I've enjoyed it. Well, Jill, I've been listening to your wonderful voice for years in my afternoon commutes. And it's, well, I, can't, I can't believe I'm still pinching myself. Is this well, really happening? Thank Jill you, Pasternak thank you so much. on my show? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, we'll have to do it again. I would just Absolutely. love to do it. Thank you so much, Jill. A pleasure. This episode of A Musical Life has been brought to you by Airturn the makers of digital accessories for musicians like the Duo Page Turning Pedals for tablets and computers. Tablets like the new iPad Pro are great for storing and reading your entire library of sheet music and music charts. And with the AirTurn Duo Page Turning Pedals, you can turn pages hands-free while keeping your hands on your instrument and your focus on your music. Visit amusicallife.com forward slash airturn and use coupon code MUSIC10 when checking out to save 10% off of your purchase of an Airturn Duo or any other product from the Airturn store. Once again, that's amusicallife.com forward slash airturn and use coupon code MUSIC with the number 10, all one word, no spaces. For links to my online popular piano school at ArtistWorks and my own personal website, be sure to visit the show notes at amusicallife.com. And please leave a comment or send me your feedback by email at stories at amusicallife.com. I'd love to hear from you. If you like this show, tell a friend or share a link on Facebook or Twitter. Be sure to subscribe to A Musical Life through iTunes or Stitcher or with your favorite podcast playing app. And consider posting a review in iTunes by going to amusicallife.com forward slash review. We're currently listed near the top of iTunes' new and noteworthy section of the music podcast category. Your iTunes subscriptions and reviews help to share this show with other listeners. So thank you for all your support. Until next time. I'm Hugh Sung, and I wish you a musical life.